then later on in the evening, we went to Remy for dinner, which was amazing. So I didn't take any video of Remy because it was still, it was our last night yeah. um, of both. our honeymoon and we, we just wanted to enjoy it. Both the chefs, there was two executive chefs, uh, one from France and one from America. They both were three Michelin star rated. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if, if, if any of you um, frequent Michelin star rated restaurants or high end restaurants, but you don't really feel as though it's appropriate to whip out a camera in the yeah. middle of your experience. Plus, they put us at like the centerpiece table. They put us at the princess table, yeah. which is um, actually basically the focal point of the dining room. Yeah. Um, so we just didn't feel comfortable. We wanted to kind of respect our serving staff, and we wanted to respect the, the ambiance and the atmosphere of the restaurant. So we elected not to do that. But. But we did take pictures, yeah. so while we talk through each of the courses, I will put up some pictures. The first course uh, was not an Emma's Bush, but it was more of a, like a like a teaser taster. Yes, I guess is how <laughs> it was you a pre Emma's Bush. <laughs> yeah, so it was two um, little like cups, and well, it was technically four. There were two each. So yeah. the first of the two cups. There was a puree of cauliflower and lemongrass with ginger, um, and it was served at room temperature. It was not quite a mousse, but it was emulsified, and that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then the, for the next one was another similar... How would you describe the little cups that it came in? They weren't phyllo dough. Imagine the texture and the composition of a fortune cookie, yes. but without the sweetness. Savory. A savory um, fortune cookie, like little bowl. But it was a cup. Correct. Little cup, bowl, whatever. Maybe like a small muffin size. Yeah, like a mini muffin, basically. Yeah. And uh, so for the second one, it was a foie gras uh, mousse with um, diced foie gras, seared foie gras on top of it. And that blew my mind. Yes. That was fantastic. I mean, they both were amazing. I, I would say there's, I can't, I can maybe say like three things that weren't good. There, there, everything was perfect though. I wouldn't say that there was anything that wasn't good. There was just things that we enjoyed less than others. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't that it was prepared poorly. It was that just like personal preference yeah. sort of a thing. Some things just aren't going to match your palate. And um, the good thing is, is that none of the things that we ordered uh, we felt strongly enough that we didn't like it where we had to re be replaced. But our server, whose name I unfortunately... She... BB, she said... BB was short for the name. Um, she had a very strong French accent. And when she originally enunciated it, I didn't really catch it. And I didn't want to stare at her name tag all night. She was, <laughs> she was like a shadow in the night. She would come deliver excellent customer service, rattle off whatever it was we were about to eat, and then disappear and let us enjoy it. Our server let us know up front that if something was served to us that we didn't like, to let her know and she would work her magic, which what she was inferring is that she would replace it with something that we thought we would like. Because the structure of the meal, which we neglected to describe to you up front, is there was a French option and an American option. Both were five course menus uh, set up uh, by the three Michelin star rated French chef and the three Michelin star rated American chef. And then down at the bottom, there was a listing of all the individual um, courses. And if you wanted to do your own three course menu and set it up yourself, you could, or you could follow their five course menu, or you could exchange one of their courses for a course down below. We decided to trust the chefs and follow their their um, pre Yeah, pre they worked hard menus. to make the menu. Yeah, you know, they've got a couple of Michelin stars, <laughs> which makes them definitely better than us in every way, shape, or form when it comes to preparing and suggesting food. Mm -hmm. So... Um, we went with that, but if you don't like something, you take a bite and you're like, this is, this is not for me, this is terrible, let her know, uh, let your server know, and they will take care of it for you. Yes. So the next course we got was, and the, these first two were not a part of the menu that we selected, they were additional courses that are provided. 
Um, so we got our amuse bouche, which was served in a bowl and it had like a crust on top that we were asked to kind of crack and eat the mousse that was underneath. So it was a, a celery puree with mm. lemongrass emulsif emulsification in it with ginger and chai as well. Very earthy, spicy, warm flavors. Phil said it tasted like Christmas it and it really did. It tasted like what you would think Christmas would taste like. So It good. was awesome. Uh, the next course was our first course. We it would both start out with lobster. So mine was presented to me sort of like a uh, Yuletide log, if you yes. want to call it that. <laughs> in the center, Christmas mode. <laughs> in the center of this log was a large chunk of langoustine, which is basically like lobster, a little bit different. Um, she called it like a a Swedish lobster. The outside section of the of the roll was like a, uh, a what they described as like a fish tartare. Yes, Phil's was excellent. I would say that was the winning of the two. And then I got a piece of lobster and then lobster claw. And it had like a mousse with it that you dipped it in. The mousse was so light and airy. It was... Saffron mousse. Saffron. Oh, so good. But you know... Phil's, I, I would say, was the winning of the two. And then the next course we got, Phil got like a scallop type dish. It had scallops, a scallop mousse, and something we have no idea what it was, but it was good. And the sauce was phenomenal. And then... She got the uh, toothfish. Oh my gosh, that was the best dish of the entire meal. Okay. Pro tip, it's not popular in America yet. Chilean sea bass is still the in fish. But toothfish is coming. Yes, toothfish, so so good, um, and it came with lentils and like a carrot puree. We both loved the sauces that it came with, and so the delicious bread that they served us with the butter and sea salt. We were also getting additional bread and dipping it into those sauces. The next course, Phil got a cauliflower steak and it came with sour cream with like a red onion, chive, and I think like a little bit of, of sea salt. Holy cannoli, so good. Cauliflower steak is an oversimplification. So this is a piece of cauliflower that's been marinated for 24 hours and allowed to absorb the flavors. And then it's roasted in butter and continually basted with butter every five minutes for an hour. It slow simmers. <laughs> and the end result is something that I can only describe as phenomenal. And it was so tender, um, I could have literally put it onto my piece of crusty French bread and spread it. I could have forced it to be spread like butter with my butter knife. And it would have been delicious, but they served it with that delicious sour cream concoction that we were discussing earlier. And it was just, I'm not a huge fan of cooked cauliflower. I love raw cauliflower, um, but uh, this cooked cauliflower was out of this world. It was so good. It and was then better than my beef. I got the duck next, and it came duck. with a gooseberry pie. The duck also came with a glaze. So delicious, cooked to perfection. Pan roasted duck. You would think, eh, pan roasted duck. No, this was amazing. Yeah. So the next course, which was still good, but I would say probably the least favorite course of all, was the beef course. It was A5 Wagyu, but supposedly raised in Australia, which I don't think makes any sense. Maybe it was imported from Japan to Australia, and then they bought it from Australia. I know that Japan has some incredibly distinct restrictions on who can buy their A5 Wagyu, like certified retailers and distributors. So I don't have the whole story. I didn't understand everything that our server said. Again, <laughs> she had a very thick French accent. So it was kind of like one of the, yeah, shake your head, smile <laughs> kind of deal until she walks away. She said it was one of the best pieces of beef that you can get anywhere in the world. And I totally believe her because it was phenomenal. Yes, it was very good. And then I got the, the lamb, which normally lamb is pretty tough, but this was cooked, again, very perfectly. And it came with B12 
beach and they rolled it up like a little fruit roll which was really good some other cut up beets raspberries and delicious sauce and just the beets with the lamb was very unique flavor but very very delicious something you wouldn't get anywhere else for sh for sure after that we had our cheese so they gave us a selection of cheeses from the cheese trolley. I want a cheese trolley in my life every day, by the way. <laughs> um, Not with these cheeses on it, you know. Phil is, Phil's a little more particular about French cheeses, but there were some good hard cheeses he liked. Not um, particular about French cheese. I just have certain cheeses that I like and certain cheeses that I don't yeah. like. I don't like brie. I don't like sheep's milk cheese. I love goat cheese. I love traditional cow's oh. milk cheeses, cheddars. Uh, things like that. There were two cheeses that I liked. One was blue cheese and the other was some French uh, flower seed cheese that turned it orange. Uh, our server wrote it down for Pauline so we can buy it at Wegmans when we get home. It was delicious and uh, the accoutrements they gave us were great. Some dried candied uh, apricots and raisins and also some fresh honeycomb which is delicious. delicious. Um, I wasn't a fan of most of the cheeses, but I did enjoy the few cheeses that I that I didn't that I did like, and I think Pauline liked almost all of them. Yeah, there was just one cheese I didn't like, but other than that, they were really really good. We'd love to tell you the names of the cheese, but <laughs> she said them in French, and we don't remember. Yeah, and I didn't want to record because this is a very unique experience and very special for me and Phil, so I wanted to live in the moment and enjoy. So then after that, we got our coffees, and I got a cappuccino and Phil got an iced coffee. Decaf iced coffee. Yes, and then I got like a banana chocolate, I don't even know what it was, but it was so good, and the chocolate sauce that they put with it, I literally was like scooping it out and like, licking my spoon so pauline's course was called just simply called the banana and it was a chocolate cake base with a passion fruit banana mousse um, with another layer of actual milk and dark chocolate on top with a uh, chocolate sauce drizzled on the side and mine was a warm raspberry compote surrounded by chilled lemon curd gel gelatin kind of um is the way i would describe it and uh, with meringue type deal on top and that was phenomenal yeah. as well his um, was super sharp with the raspberry flavor nice and tart yeah flavor it was delicious phil's also came with a side of raspberry sorbet so then after that they presented us this egg like game of thrones egg that Seriously. was silver it's huge <laughs> and it was in french happy honeymoon and then they later served that cake to us it honestly was probably the best dessert i've ever had in my life so there's a special chocolate that comes from tasmania and they incorporated it into a mousse and then they had the bottom layer which would normally be like a cake it wasn't a cake it was like it's kind of like a little crunchy yeah i don't know how to describe it i don't want to call it a shell because it it didn't when you cut it it it's cut, like a soft brittle yeah so basically when you cut into it with a fork it cut clean it didn't shatter or splinter yeah um so i don't really know how to describe that it definitely wasn't a mousse it doesn't definitely wasn't like a solid or a brittle chocolate they used this chocolate and they they had it in three different layers and it was just fantastic they had With a sauce, a sauce. That, and a sauce that accompanied it <laughs> she had a french name for it that i don't remember it Guys, was a caramel or something and then in addition to that special honeymoon cake we also got this other little a blackberry cake. tartlet it was in another game of thrones egg dome that one wasn't my favorite but uh, to be honest, we had been eating and eating and eating, so I think I was just ready to pass out at that point anyways. If you like blackberry, <laughs> it'll probably be your favorite dessert ever. Yes. And then we got fruit roll-ups. <laughs> they, they're loving the roll-up thing. It was with homemade fruits. The flavor for us was slightly off, but 
we may have just been like so full and had everything that was beyond perfect. The flavors within the fruit roll up, house made fruit roll up uh, with a variety of different fruits. They didn't give us all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. They just asked if we had any allergies and they brought it to us when we said no. Mm -hmm. The base materials that they used to create it, not all the flavors work together and that might have been exactly what they were going for. Uh, different experience, contrasting flavors, fine. It wasn't for us. Yeah. You may love it, but we didn't like it, but you should try to keep an open mind. Yeah. And then the the last piece of chocolate we got was, well, not the last. It was a white uh, chocolate truffle. Yes. And it was a little Remy hat. Yeah, little with, chef hat. With And it said Remy on the bottom of it, the chocolate. And then they also gave us two suckers and a box of chocolates to go. Why not? So they're in our suitcases. We'll eat them when we get home. Along with the ganache free chocolate yes, that, that we, have we bought yet to the eat. first night of the honeymoon. So it's like a week and a half old now. <laughs> it's fine. But overall, Remy was amazing. The point here is that they did some nice things for us because it was our honeymoon. We watched other people that sat down at the same time of us, as us get up and leave before us because they didn't get this extra little different things that we got. Maybe you'll connect with your server in a special way and they want to do something special for you and it'll be different. What I've gathered or what I think I gathered from observing what happened and, and watching the YouTube reviews for months and months and months leading up to the cruise of others is that every experience at Apollo and Remy is going to be different and individual. All I can do is encourage you if you have the extra money to go because it is pricey i don't know it's that was that that was like an average dinner for us going yeah. out in rochester but we did pay to go to a, a supper dinner in our cruise fee that night that yeah. we didn't take advantage of so that was yeah. rolled in that yeah. we don't see on the bill that includes two free alcoholic drinks three different courses of dessert five courses of actual food and then a cheese course spaced out over two, two and a half, hours two and a half or three hours yeah so uh, don't expect to show up, eat, and leave. It is an experience. It's going to take up the majority of your evening. Um, and come with an open mind and make sure to be super friendly with your server. Yes. One other really important thing took up our whole other part of the evening. Well, also packing. <laughs> um, but we have been busy talking to DVC. And now we are officially DVC members. Oh my god we have been talking about this for five forever years. and we went to the dvc uh preview event we on the ship that. which you you get you know cr stateroom credit uh fifty dollars for yep. per stateroom for the initial presentation that's open to the public you just drop in you sign you scan your key to the world card which checks you in Mm -hmm. They apply a fifty dollar credit to your stateroom, and then if you schedule a meeting to go talk, you know, two on one or one on one, with one of their two salespeople that they have on board, either the Dream or the Fantasy, um, then they give you an additional twenty five dollars per person. We weren't concerned about that. That's not why we went. We went because we're genuinely interested yes. in uh, DVC, and we heard that they were doing deals. And at the 175 point level that we bought into, um, so the first three stages are 100 points, which is the minimum, 150 points, which is the most popular package, and then 175, which is beyond that, and then all the way up to 4,000 point packages, which if you have 700, that's like vacationing the whole year. <laughs> yeah. That's what you want to do, fine. But uh, that's a little outside of our price range. They had a special incentive once you got to the 175 point range which was several thousand dollars off the purchase price and some special um, purchase terms so we're not going to get into that because that's going to reveal some private stuff about our finances that we don't want to get into but if you ever find yourself on a Disney cruise and they have this DVC presentation and it's something you're seriously considering I would I would definitely go Yes, and it's important. I would encourage anyone to go if you're someone who wants to go to Disney every year, or every other year. Yeah. It financially, I think it makes sense if you plan on going to Disney. So yeah. that's why we chose to do it. I, I'm going to be honest, I was not planning on doing it, but 
the deal was too good to pass up. Exactly. And knowing what we're going to be spending in the near future, yeah. it only makes sense. So when we go to Disney, we like to enjoy ourselves and... We go pretty hard and we figured out based on what we're spending on average for the two of us, um, what we purchased will pay for itself in six trips. So yes. roughly between three and six years. Yeah, so... Over the light. And then we have the... For the, 50 years we have this, so... Yeah. Disney forever. <laughs> well, as you can see, we've only been yawning every five seconds. Uh, we are very tired. Um, very, you know, definitely sad that the honeymoon is over, but so excited to go home and see our dog, Zeus. And see our family. And our family. So thank you so much for watching, guys. This has been an awesome cruise. We still have breakfast tomorrow and traveling home. Comment below if you like the video. And as always, peace, love, and Quaharini. DVC. <laughs>